Uh, welcome to Signal Integrity and Electromagnetic Compliance Training for Mere Mortals. Uh, my goal is to teach everyone in the universe how to design high-speed digital analog RF systems that work right and pass FCC CISPR tests on the first try. Uh, this particular uh, session is going to be on electromagnetic interference causes and cures and off we go. Now if we were to look at the issue of radiated uh, EMI uh, this is one of these situations that if we have energy plus an antenna you're going to get radiated EMI and about the only thing you can do if you've got both the energy and the antenna is to somehow shield it but if you have no energy you will have no EMI if you have no antenna you'll have no EMI and you can have uh, quite a bit of noise inside a box but if you shield and filter adequately you'll have no EMI so let's go ahead and move on and take a closer look at the energy side of this equation uh, when we look at energy if I looked at this on an oscilloscope it would look like a trapezoid so there's what it looks like on an oscilloscope but that same energy when I look at it on a spectrum analyzer it looks like a frequency comb so if this was a uh, 100 megahertz uh, clock going here what I'd see on the spectrum analyzer would be 100 megahertz, 200 megahertz, 300 megahertz, 400 megahertz, 500 megahertz, etc. And how high in frequency it would go would be determined by the steepness of the rising and the falling edge. The steeper it is, the higher in frequency the comb. The more rounded or the slower the rise time, the fewer elements we've got in this comb. So just remember that energy is one of the things that we absolutely have to uh, have to have in order to have uh, radiated emissions. Now when we talk about an antenna, an antenna has two parts that are separated that work off each other. So for example, a dipole antenna is very efficient with a quarter wave stub either side of the signal generator. So if I go a quarter wave this way and a quarter wave that way, feed it to the center, this is a very efficient antenna. Now on the other hand if you give me a noisy digital circuit and put a ground lead out that side and a ground lead out this side then what you've done is you've given me effectively the same thing as a dipole antenna with a noise generator in the middle. Not a good idea. Now on the other hand if the signal current and the return current are closely coupled this makes a poor antenna. So imagine that I take this part of the dipole and I fold it over so it is parallel to the, the uh, left side of the dipole and at that point all I've done is just extended the transmission line. It, it isn't necessarily uh, going to radiate because the way you get it to radiate is to get the energy going back and forth this way as opposed to just balancing back and forth between the two two legs. So if the two legs of differential pair are the same electrical length and are each individually coupled to their own respective return current the pair makes a poor antenna. If the two legs of a differential pair are different electrical lengths the difference in length results in a longitudinal signal which is common mode in nature and will radiate. So for example, let's say that I took a signal and I and and this is the signal current going this way and this little mark represents some sort of slot in the reference plane. When I am on this part those signals are going to be in phase with each other and as soon as I get over to this part then since the return current had to go around this obstruction there's going to be a difference in phase between the signal current and the return current. So what happens there is I get a longitudinal element out of this 
and the problem with the longitudinal element is that common mode will radiate about 60 dB better than will uh, differential mode. So these are just different ways that you can end up uh, creating an antenna. So differential noise or differential EMI is the direct result of digital switching. Differential mode becomes common mode when the return current is decoupled from the signal current. Now common reasons for this decoupling include poor power delivery system design which leads to plain noise or poor routing practice or layer stack up which leads to orphaned return current and both of these things are creating common mode noise which again it has a radiation efficiency of about 60 plus dB greater than the same current in a differential situation. So this is just another example of something you shouldn't do. If I've got a ground lead going off this side of the board and a ground lead going off that side of the board and if this happens to be some sort of digital circuit uh, which will almost always have noise on the ground plane then what you've given me is uh, a quarter wave uh, or half wave dipole with a noise generator in the middle which will radiate like crazy. Now this is another view of the same sort of thing. Here's my little 6 by 6 inch uh, printed circuit board. Uh, I've got capacitors here. I've got a voltage regulator module there. I've got different places where I'm pulling current from and this is a uh, a picture of the noise on the power ground plane. So these are deviations from uh, say 3.3 volts if that's what VCC was here and it's just simply giving me the worst case deviation from uh, the norm which might be in this case 3.3 volts. I don't recall exactly when I did this slide. But if you've got that much voltage across this plane and you put one ground lead here and one ground lead there then I could end up with about three quarters of a volt across those two ground leads. If that's what you're doing don't be surprised when you light up the spectrum analyzer and you can't get these things uh, through the radiated emission tests. Now, a product becomes an unwanted radio transmitter and cannot ship because it fails regulatory tests. Now, what are the key reasons? First key reason, multiple grounds connected to off-board leads. Signal ground, chassis ground, analog ground, uh, RF ground, etc. Anytime I go into a consulting job and I find that I've got multiple things that are called ground, I'm almost certain uh, that uh, we're going to have radiated emission problems just due to the multiple grounds. Now power delivery and plane noise coupled with bad connector placement. Again that's your dipole antenna in the middle of a noise generator. Poor connector or cable strategy. Uh, if you do not have adequate return current paths through the connector or through the cable then you end up with some sort of uh, antenna there and also most likely a, a differential to common mode noise conversion mechanism at the same time. Now poor signal integrity leads to ringing, crosstalk, ground bounce and these things are the engines that create the energy that ends up uh, hooking up with an antenna when it finds an accommodating antenna. Now poor routing practices create antennas uh, if you lose the return current then all of a sudden we've got a problem because as soon as you decouple the signal current from the return current I've got most likely a pretty good antenna radiating. Now crosstalk coupled onto IO leads uh, the little green LED on the front panel may not be a problem uh, but if you get the clock too close to that lead and it radiates across uh, onto the little green LED then even though the clock itself is not radiating through crosstalk you may be coupling on to the green LED and causing it to radiate. Other things that can be a problem poorly implemented DC to DC converter uh, things that I call chips from hell that have inadequate power and ground uh, pins in the package and inadequate filtering and shielding. To control EMI, this is the sequence. 
First of all, control ringing. This is the basic engine of all noise. Two, never lose or, re or abuse the return current path. This is a common mode noise genera generation mechanism. It'll create 60 dB plus increase in radiation for the same signal current. Control crosstalk and keep noise signals off status type signals that may be a good antenna. Again, this is getting clock onto the little green LED. Filter every lead that leads the system. There are multiple ways to do this, and you use, must use the correct method for your situation. Design power delivery appropriately to facilitate quiet planes. If you have quiet planes, you don't have to chase that noise. Finally, have an unbroken ground plane making all ground leads common across the full spectrum of frequencies. If you have an isolated output such as uh, a medical uh, device or a USB host, you must bypass to a common ground uh, in order to take care of this problem. Finally, place connectors as close together so that the ground leads of each of the cables are at the same potential, i.e. don't create a dipole antenna with a noise generator in the middle. Now, when we look at shielding and filtering, if you're using uh, SIEMC Jumpstart or Pro Tune-Up type design process with properly packaged chips, shielding is generally not necessary. However, filtering is always used for any signal going off board, and filtering is also used to protect the system from uh, ESD and noise in the outside world. So, that was the brief overview of uh, EMC or EMI. Uh, so, off we go, and we'll catch you on the next slide.